Hi guys, welcome to Floral Friday on Sunday. I'm Jenny Martin, ethnobotanist, and today I want to look at white clover with you. So white clover is in the pea family, for Fabaceae, and it's in the genus Trifolium. So tri, three folium leaves. And if you look at the three leaves, you'll see on them three white triangles, and that will help take you into this species. So the scientific name for this is Trifolium repens. So the repens is because it's creeping. So you have underground, you sometimes have rhizomes which go underground and pop up new, fl new flowers. This is more an above ground, so the stems actually crawl above ground and then they root down at different nodules to produce new flowers. However, it also does reproduce by seed and it is a favourite of honeybees and that's one of the reasons why it's really drawn my eye and wanting to do a Floral Friday on this plant because in the garden I've been noticing all the honeybees on it and just they're having an absolute feast and it is an absolute favourite of the honeybee. Apparently the nectar contains 40% sugar which is really high sugar content where a coke for instance allegedly um, contains about 11% sugar which is still very high, but so 40% sugar in the nectar of the clover, the white clover, and about apparently 27% protein. So what is really great about this plant, as many other plants do, um, is they put out their colours are what will attract their pollinators. So bees can't see all the colours that are within the red spectrum. They can see yellow and they can see white, and so here we have a white flower, but have a look at your white clovers. Once they've been visited by a bee, or they're no longer producing the nectars, they turn nectar, they turn a pinky colour, the flowers turn a pinky colour, and they droop. So if we have a look at this plant here, we can see this flower here, we can see how they drooped, and also they are turning a kind of a brownie red colour which basically the bees won't be able to see that and it's a signal, don't, don't bother coming, there's nothing here for you. Just come to these white ones up here. So check out other plants in your neighbourhood and see if you can notice a change in the colours over a period of time to see about whether they're attracting or discouraging pollinators. So for instance, horse chestnut, the flower of the horse chestnut before it's been pollinated is yellow while well, it's putting out nectar to attract pollinators and then inside the flower once it's been pollinated it turns a pink colour. We also have in my village we have a um, plant called a, a lily of some sort, it's a red hot poker and the, the, the petals of the flower are red while they're immature and then when they're ready to be pollinated they turn a yellow again attracting bees. So enjoy going and checking out the pollinators and the colours of the flowers and also from an ethnobotanical point of view red clover has been eaten as a pot herb. apparently it's very nutritious but you have to be careful because it has the um, compounds in it that produce cyanide in the body like uh, apple pips and peach pips and things like that. Um, and also in India it's been used as a vermifuge so to help get rid of worms and science has apparently verified that now, Western science has verified that, that yes it does help get rid of worms. So enjoy your white clover, Trifolium repens and the drooping changes, changing in colour of the petals as they are attracting and not wanting to attract pollinators. See you next time.